Hello, my name is Thiago, and in the next 9 minutes I will be talking about the solid principles. This is today's agenda. First, a brief introduction about solid, then I'm going to deep down into each one of those five principles alongside a common scenario where we could be applying this principle in order to have a better code. What is solid? Solid is a group of five different design patterns that, when used together, are going to positively impact on your project by reducing dependencies and increasing maintainability. If in your project it's common to fix a bug and then you are going to create two different other bugs, you should start thinking about using Solid. The Single Responsibility Principle It says that your classes should have a single responsibility, because the more responsibilities your class has, the more often you need to change it. If your classes implement multiple responsibilities, they are no longer independent of each other. A perfect example of simple responsibility principle are the classic three-tier projects, when you are going to segregate each responsibility in a different tier. So the controller has its own responsibilities, the business logic has its own responsibilities, and the data access has its own responsibilities. Here we have an example of a class not following the single responsibility principle. The first block of code is responsible to sum two numbers, while the second block is responsible to log the operations from the first block. So, this class has two responsibilities. The first responsibility is to sum, and the second responsibility is to log those operations. Let's see how we could fix it. Applying the single responsibility principle, we had to block those, that class into two different classes. The first class is responsible to sum, and the second class is responsible to log. Now, if we need to change anything in the log mechanism, we are sure that we are not breaking anything in the, the sum operation. The open closed principle says that you should be able to extend a class behavior without modifying it, which means that when you are talking about extending your classes, it's open. But when we are talking about to modify your base class, this class is closed, you cannot. Here is an example of a class not following the open closed principle. We have a method to do math operations that if we need to include the division operation, we would need to modify the class. Applying the open closed principle, we abstract the base class and each additional mathematical operation is going to be extended from it without modifying the base class behavior. Another scenario where we are not following the open closed principle. Here we have two different validations before executing the method action, which means that if you want to add or modify one of those validations, we would need to modify the class. Applying the open closed principle, we have to abstract the validations in order to be able to extend or modify those validations without modifying the base class. Then, our email sender may have as much validations as needed without modifying it. At last but not least, we could also extend our objects with extension methods in order to respect the open closed principle. The Liskov substitution principle enables you to replace objects of a parent class with objects of a subclass without breaking the application. This requires all subclasses to behave in the same way as the parent class. Here we have a perfect example of a class not following the Liskov substitution principle. If we replace the class for its base class, we are going to see a different result. In order to apply the Liskov substitution principle, we have to abstract the calculate class and inherit both the subtraction and the addition class from it. Now, if we change the base class, 
we are still going to have the same results. The interface segregation principle, it says to do not use generic interfaces with contracts that are not implemented by their children. If your class inherits from an interface but do not use all its methods, you are doing it wrongly. Let's take this abstract scenario where we have an, an animal interface which walks, breathes, eats and arguments. And from these interfaces, we are creating the human. The human has all its functionalities, so, so far so good. But let's say that now we need to create a whale. And here we have a problem, because our whale does not walk. So here we need to implement a not implemented exception, which is not good. So if at any time your code goes through this scenario, we are going to have an exception. How can we fix this? In order to fix this, we have to apply the interface segregation principle. We are going to segregate our functionalities in different interfaces. So as you can see now, we have the interface I feed, which eats, the interface I arguments, which arguments, and so, so on. Now, if we want to create a human or a whale, we are only using the interface that they are going to use uh, for real. So uh, here, we are not going to, to use the interface walk for the, the whale as far as it's not going to be used. So we are not, you are only going to use the interface required for those objects to behave properly. The dependency inversion principle says that instead of depending on your dependencies, you should be depending on the abstraction of your dependencies. This principle is usually used with dependency injection in order to create loser decoupled applications. Let's see how it works. This is a classic situation where we are, we are not respecting the dependency inversion principle. We have a repository layer being called directly from the business layer. Here we are not calling the abstraction of the repository layer, we are calling the repository layer itself. Applying the dependency inversion principle, our business class must depend on an abstraction of the repository layer. This abstraction is then injected in the business layer making this business layer dependent on the abstraction of this repository layer. It makes much easier to test any of those layers as far as we can mock their dependencies. Also, it's better for working teams as far as one, of the, one developer can work in a layer without depending on a developer working in another layer. That's all for today. If you have any questions, you may find me in any of those social medias. Thank you.